So you probably have a lot of questions after Japan went ahead and released wastewater from its damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. That's right. Remember this plant and what happened to it in 2011? In the 12 years since the disaster, they've been treating the plant's radioactive wastewater, filtering almost all the radioactive elements. But when Japan announced it was going to release this water into the sea, this happened. Protests erupted in neighboring China, Hong Kong, Korea, and in Japan itself. Nevertheless, on August 24th and October 5th, Japan released the first two batches of treated water. So now, you and others across the region are probably wondering, is it still safe to eat anything from the sea? Particularly if it's been caught anywhere in the waters near Japan? Not everyone seems to be concerned. Here's Japan's Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida, eating sashimi from the release area. OK, so what should you believe? I recently made a trip to Fukushima. I spoke to those who are affected by the situation, as well as a couple of nuclear and environmental experts. And in this video, we're going to address some of your burning questions. Let's start with, why is Japan releasing reactor wastewater in the first place? Let's go back to 2011. When the tsunami damaged the Fukushima plant, three reactors went into meltdown. To cool the overheating nuclear fuel rods, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, pumped seawater into the plant. This water became contaminated with radioactive particles. Since then, they've been using a filtration system called the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, to filter out most of the radioactive elements from the water. This treated water is stored in about 1,000 tanks on site. To give you an idea, that's the volume of water equivalent to 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The plant is running out of space, which is why they need to release the water. But also... If you store the water on land, uh, you subject yourself to a lot of risk, right? I mean, there are a lot of security problems that you have to put in place. You can have some kind of a terrorist event, then that will cause kind of a panic. It's the psychological fear. But here's the catch. Remember, we said they managed to filter out most of the radioactive elements, except for one, tritium. Tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, and it's chemically impossible to remove it from water. Tritium exists not as tritium itself, but as part of the water molecule. We know water molecule is H2O. So one of the H is actually replaced by tritium. And chemically, there's no difference between those uh, water molecules that have a tritium in it and those molecules that have a usual hydrogen in it. There's no way that this catchy can be differentiated and actually removed from the system. Because tritium cannot be removed, what the government and TEPCO have done instead is to dilute it. The plan is to release this treated, diluted wastewater gradually over 30 years. But wait a minute. You might be thinking, should I be concerned about tritium? How dangerous is it? Here's some reassuring news. We actually already live with tritium every day. It occurs at low levels naturally in things like your drinking water, rainwater, the sea, or even our own bodies. Plus, it's used to make things like glow-in-the-dark exit signs and watches. The question then is, does the wastewater from Fukushima contain dangerously high levels of tritium? Tritium's radioactivity in water is measured in a unit called Baccarols. TEPCO is working with independent third parties, like the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, to monitor sites near where the wastewater is released. Regular tests are run to ensure that tritium levels remain very low. Water samples near the release site measured below 10 bacros per litre. That's a thousand times less than the World Health Organization's limit of 10,000 bacros per litre for drinking water. Countries like the US and UK have supported Japan's method of release as safe. Also, remember we said that tritium already occurs naturally in seawater? Computer simulations have shown that the treated wastewater shouldn't cause a spike in radiation levels beyond the one kilometer radius of the release site. In fact, tritium levels near Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand should remain practically unchanged, experts say. We find that the risk to the sea, to the wildlife and to the environment, most scientists actually assess it to be quite low. But here's another question. If you love sashimi and seafood imported from Japan, should you worry about tritium contamination? The short answer, probably not. 
One expert told us that if we ingest tritium, our bodies can easily expel it just like water. Which, remember, tritium could be a part of. Or if you are externally exposed to it, the radiation given off by tritium is so weak, it cannot penetrate our skin. Our bodies naturally contain around 3,000 backrolls per litre of radioactivity. Even if you were to eat a fish caught near the wastewater release site, the level of radioactivity would be small in comparison, says this expert. All of the radiation that's being released will mix and very heavily be diluted quickly and then actually get carried out eastwards into the open Pacific Ocean. And then it becomes part of the rest of the, the Pacific circulations. Ultimately, it, it will reach the North American coastline, it will reach South China Sea, it will come past Singapore as well, but at such low concentrations that even with the most sensitive detectors, it will be at, at levels far below what we could ever actually pick up. In fact, TEPCO and Fukushima's agricultural co-ops are so keen to reassure the world's consumers that they are organising food fairs abroad with produce from the prefecture. But if this seafood is safe, you might wonder, why then has China banned all seafood from Japan? China has stated its concerns over radioactive contamination. But some experts believe the ban could be motivated more by political reasons. We all know about the interests of China within the region. I think Japan has done all it could in the scientific realm. But the problem with China is that it is political agenda. And I don't think that any scientific solution can be found. While some reactions from neighbouring countries were to be expected, I was surprised to see some Japanese locals themselves protesting on the streets. So why are Fukushima residents angry? In short, it's a matter of trust, or the lack of it. I met with Masami Yoshizawa, a local cow farmer. In January 2013, a fish near the Fukushima plant was found with radiation levels 2,000 times beyond the safe limit because untreated, contaminated water had leaked into the sea. Today, some like Yoshizawa continue to do their own testing because they simply don't trust TEPCO. この海とか海の魚、川に登ってくるこのシーバス、鈴木がね、心配なんですよ。だから僕はもう調べるしかないと。東京電力や国の出す情報を待っていたり、鵜呑みにしてはいけないと。here, we come to the crux of Japan's problem. Even as Japan's government and TEPCO are doing their part to assure the world that Fukushima's treated wastewater is safe, and most scientific experts say it can be safely released with no real radioactive risk, there are skeptics who question the process. Politics and the lack of trust may prove to be tougher obstacles to overcome. So, would you reach for that plate of sushi now? Well, 